Hi, welcome to another Mac 7 tutorial. This is number 45. Using audio to modulate effects. Well, you can probably tell by the music that we're still watching this same old car crash over and over, and we've got our volume control in place from the spigot monkey, or spigot object, named monkey. Don't think of it as spigot monkey. Name them different every time you use them. So anyway, I'm going to turn this down just to maintain sanity. So we have um, sound coming out here, and it's controllable, and maybe we could use it for something. Um, for example, um, to modulate an effect, since that's the title of this. So let's go ahead and unlock our patcher and just move things around a little bit to make it convenient to do that. So our spigot monkey is spigot is going to be here. Here's our actually I'm going to put it over here just here's our volume control and here is our speaker control and that gets everything up out of the corner here. Um we also I I I want to get something that has a little bit more of a punchy sound to it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to read B ball. Read the B-Ball movie. You could also go and get the movie here and see that it's named B-Ball, but you don't need to. Just trust me, it's B-Ball. There it is, B-Ball. Let me turn the volume up a little bit. Yeah, see that nice whack whack. All right. So we have this nice sound coming out, and I'm going to turn it back down so I don't have to listen to it. And what we can do is take the output from uh, this gain control here, and um, we can send it to an object called average. And so we're going to type in N, whoops, my patcher's not unlocked, N, um, AVG, but not the one with the tilde, just the regular one. No, I'm sorry, there is no regular one with average. It's just average. Okay. Hello, average. Um, and what average does is it takes a an incoming signal, it averages out its kind of ups and downs, and it outputs um, a numerical value. Um, however, it only outputs that numerical value when you tell it to. So um, what we need over here is another object called metronome new metro why not make it 40 times a second what the heck it always seems to work and here's an on switch for it a toggle you just type a t and you've got a toggle there we go there we go and now uh put a f an f for a float and we'll see what we've got coming out of here um, what I'll do is turn the volume back up, and maybe I'll turn it down on my computer so you don't have to listen to it quite so much. So you can see the average isn't doing anything right now, but um, we'll hit this toggle, and now it's outputting whatever number happens to be there. Now this number is just flying by here so fast that you can barely see it. Um, but one thing that we do know or we notice is it's not really getting anywhere near a one. And if we're going to drive an effect, we need something near a one. So what I think we can do is first we put a scale object in here. That's N S C A L E. No tilde on this one. And I mean it this time. And then we type zero space, zero, oops, sorry, um, one point zero if you want, but it'll get rid of it, uh, zero point space, one point, sorry, I forgot that first point. I just want to make sure the thing has no way of forgetting that this is all float numbers. Okay, so now this number is going to come out, it's going to go into scale. Um, zero, will be our low input value, that's no problem. The high input value is not going to be anywhere near one point 
So what we want to do is put another float box here that we can adjust. You can just copy this one if you want on that second inlet and to give us a better idea of what our low input number is. And then I'm just going to copy it again and stick this down here. Now the real question in my mind is whether we then need to put a line object under here. So let's just see if we can live without it. Um, I'm going to lock this. I'm going to say this is going to go up to about point, uh, 0.2. And what kind of number? I saw it go over 1 there. Boom, boom. Hey, maybe it'll work. We still don't know. So let's copy our, uh, let's unlock our patcher here and copy our P window over to here. So we have another one. And then we'll move this over just to give us a little space to work. There you go. There you go. And let's um, use Burkosa so that just type a J. And look at that, Burkosa comes right up. And we'll just hook right up to it. Wow! What do you mean Burkosa doesn't un understand? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, look, isn't it nice to have the max window open? Delete that before, there we go. Hello. So brightness, contrast, saturation. We have to remember to send it a number with the right word, which we do by um, no, highlighting it and going over to the inspector and seeing what is it that causes brightness it is the word brightness. So let's type in n prepend brightness. Okay. And then we need some video. So we take some video from the movie player and run it in there and run this out here and see if we need to attach a line object to this. Boom, boom, no, it works perfectly. Look at that. So that audio, depending on how you were to adjust it, is, is making this thing uh, uh, flash. So you're actually driving the effect with the sound. Very exciting, is it not? Um, and if you wanted to adjust it, you could either turn this down a little bit, or actually up a little bit would make it less sensitive, right? Because it's a scale 0 to 1. You, you get the idea. This is on the low side of the scale. So if you want to make it less sensitive, get closer to there. Now it'll just be vague. Okay. Oh, and then, um, whoops, don't go negative, just go down to where we were before, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, these number boxes could also be useful. So this is the low side of the input, low side of the output. This one is the low side of the output. So if you wanted this to scale upward a bit, so that you could always have some brightness, you could put another box. Let's go ahead and option click on that, connect this to that, and then move this up, to, whoops, lock your patcher, and move this up to 0.5, and you'll see it'll never go below, you know, 0.5 now. So now when you bounce it, that ball, it just, right? And then we'll make this a little bit lower, down to 0.2. So there you go. Now you've got this sort of lightning effect. Boom, boom. You could even make this um, uh, low value a little higher. But remember, it's, it's always going to be scaling. So you can make it full brightness. But then I think you would have to turn the uh, maximum value up a little. So. Let's do that, put that there, and make this, uh, whoops, lock your patcher, make that a two, click, two, good. There you go. So 
what's going on. Movie is sending the sound at full volume to the sound output component, sock monkey, named monkey. There's sock monkey. It's sending it out to this gain control. Gain control is sending it out to average. Average is making numbers out of it every time it gets a sound. Metro is banging those numbers out of it. We're scaling it between 0 and 1, except we're actually scaling it between 0 and 0 0.023 on the input side, so that our output side is always between full brightness and twice brightness. And now we know what's going on here, and that comes down here and says, oh, brightness. Uh, let's hit the brightness on this. We could, if we felt like it, change this word to contrast or saturation. Boom. And make it just blink some colors. Nice. Well, that's it in a nutshell. How do you modulate sound, modulate a video effect with some, uh, here, we'll even turn this one up. Oops. Turn this one up a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's just so fancy now. Pow, pow. Um, how do you sound to modulate a video effect? This is how you do it. So get out there and do it. Patch well. I will see you next time around.